What did Miss Osborne tell you? I got his earphone. While you're doing vocab. Okay. <laughs> Karen, are you not going to? Did you define them? Are you going to? Uh, no, you can get your pencil.
harmony and balance and moderation. Okay, so this is completely different. This time period is all about, um, or the art from this time period is showing suffering, depressing kinds of things, okay? So what was the guy's name? He's one of your vocab words. That was one of the manneristic artists that we looked at, Austin. Not Shakespeare. No, he's a writer. No. <laughs> El Greco. El Greco. What does that mean, El Greco? What does it mean? talking about the, Re the Protestant Reformation over the last couple months. So what's yeah. going on in the Reformation? What is this big split during that time? The split in the Reformation. Andrea, what's the split in the Reformation? What is that big change that happens? Come on, guys. What is the split? What split happens, Jared? No, no, no. In the, in the Protestant Reformation... Good. So the Protestants break away from the Catholics. So there's lots of religious turmoil going on during this time. And with religious turmoil, you're going to get political turmoil, right? Because the Pope is at the head of the Catholic Church. He is a religious head. He's a political head. So when this stuff is in turmoil, that's going to produce political turmoil as well. Okay? Good? So this is one of El Greco's pieces. So what is going on in this painting? It's the death of Christ. Good. So this is called the Holy Trinity. So this is as Christ is being pulled off of the cross. No, just look and talk to me about it, okay? So you see his feet, got the holes in his hands. What else is going on? He looks like he's dead. Yeah, he's dead, right? So he's being pulled off the cross. And so this is called the Holy Trinity. So what's the Trinity? Do you want me to turn off so you can see that? Yeah. Does that help? Okay. All right. So he's being pulled off of the cross. So what is what is the Trinity? The Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? So the Trinity in the Bible is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we've got the Son, so Jesus is the Son of God, right? And then this is, I'm going to say, this is God, so this is Father God. And then, so in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is a lot of times referenced as a dove, as a white dove. So this is representing the Holy Spirit, Okay. What is, what is the emotion in this painting? What do people's faces look like? Sad. Sad. Sad, right? It's really depressing. His body is really elongated and contorted, so it's very dramatic, right? So you put your head up. Come on. It's very dramatic. These women look like what? Sad. They look like they're crying. They're distraught. They're sad, right? Good. So it's very dramatic. Yeah, so these babies. So... Um, we looked it up. So the, if you guys ever heard the term cherub, cherub, okay, so a cherub is basically like a baby, fat baby angel. If you're, like a lot of times at Christmas, people put up cherubs in their houses during like Christmas time. And so these are baby angels. He's like standing on, so he's like on a cloud, okay? All right, what about this one? This one's called the disrobing of Christ. What do you think about? Do what? Very Yeah, okay, so he is dressed in what color robe? Yeah. Red. So why do you, and so what is everyone else, what is everyone else wearing? Yeah. So he's very, he's like popping out, right? He, it's 
very distinct, right? So he is the centerpiece of this painting, right? What do people's faces look like in this painting? Sad, depressed, distraught. Again, it's this emotion, this really high, heightened emotion of suffering. Good. Lots of people around him. Very good. And this one. So this is called the resurrection. Okay, so what's going on here? Good. So what color is Christ? White. What does that white color represent? Why do you think he's white? Purity, right? So this is after Christ has died on the cross. Sergi, sit up, please. He's died on the cross. He's buried for three days. He's buried, and three days later he rises, right? So this is his resurrection into heaven. So this pure, that white represents his purity, okay? What's going on down here?
English political thinkers. So at the end of the Reformation, what has been going on? So there's been had all of this religious turmoil, so that's going to produce political turmoil. There's been lots of wars. So Thomas Hobbes and John Locke become two big revolutionaries of political thought during this time, okay? So what you guys are going to do is you're going to go back in your books and you're going to read about these guys and we're going to come up with what their ideas are. We're going to compare them, okay? So you just need to know that they're the two main political thinkers of this time, okay? Get on this one? No. Alright, so I'll go back. I'll go back. So I want you guys to do a T. You, know, you, you guys know how to do a T chart, right? Yeah. So just put John Locke on one side and Thomas Hobbes on the other. Go through your book and read about these guys. What are their beliefs? Okay? One of the first things I want you to know is what did they think the world looked like before society, okay? See, so these are going to be big differences, okay? So 476, so go through, read about these guys, find out what their beliefs are, okay?
looks what? like the Forest Society, Austin. Solitary, what, 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 poor, what? nasty broker. Solit what does solitary mean? If you're a solitary person. You're alone, so soul means one. So solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Brutish, what does brutish mean? Harsh, harsh, brutal, and short. So if you have a short life, that means what? You probably, he, so he thinks they're poor, they're nasty, lots of disease probably. What does Locke think that the world looks like before society? Equality. Equality and freedom. Quality and freedom. Ooh. So no war, right? Good. So what does Hobbes think about absolute power? Jared. That's what makes society. So, so one absolute ruler should be at the head of society. Okay, so do you write this word down? One sovereign. What is sovereign? Sovereign. So, if you're a if you're a sovereign, so the noun ver, or the noun um, definition is a sovereign is someone who's at the top. They're at the head. Like no one is above them. Like Everyone the is below them. So they're the absolute power. But, like, like a king. Like a king, exactly. So who are the, some of the sovereign kings that we talked about that were at the head that were absolute power? Henry the Eighth. Henry the Eighth. Henry the Eighth. Do what? No, he's not really an app. He's not really a. Uh, no, I don't think Philip. Do they gain their power from God, like that one word? Yeah, divine right of kings, right? Good. So they believe that God had sent them there, that they were the absolute power, that they were the sovereign. Good. Who was that? The PowerPoint we did. Remember the Sun King? What was his name? Speech. 
So freedom of speech, uh, uh, Jared. You cannot offend anybody. Yeah, you can't like threaten to kill the president, right? So there's limits to these freedoms of speech, okay? So Locke comes up with these natural rights, okay? So these fold over into our like constitution, so our Declaration of Independence. So these natural rights flow into our society today, okay? Tell me something else about these guys. What is another thing that Locke believes in? Obligation between what? Did you get that far? No. Yeah. Between people and government. So, what is a mutual obligation? What does a mutual obligation mean? If you have a mutual obligation with someone, what does that mean? Arguing? Not arguing. Daily basis, it's regular. So a mutual obligation is an agreement, okay? So we have an agreement between people and government. What is that obligation between people and government? I wish I was going to Wait. What does government do for us? It helps us. It provides for us. It provides what? Freedom. Freedom. It provides freedom. It provides stability. Good. So freedom. Good. Go, go. Right. Finish it tomorrow. I don't know how to stop it. Do I just press the red button? Pause, I guess. Yeah.